Hi, good morning. You're watching Bloomberg Quint, and today we're talking about the reopening of cinemas on Talking Point. Uh, that's on the 15th of this month, when effectively cinemas and multiplexes can reopen across the country. It's going to be a challenging situation, and we're joined today by the CEO of P PVR Cinemas, uh, Gautam Datta. Gautam, good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure you're looking forward uh, to the 15th. It's been six excruciating months uh, for your business and for your company. What's the reopening plan? Uh, thank you so much for getting me on the show. It's absolutely a pleasure. And this is a new format, so I must congratulate uh, Bloomberg on being the front uh, uh, runners for redefining media in this manner. So awesome. Uh, I think uh, these have been interesting time. Everybody has gone back, redefined uh, their own business models. For us, it's been a bit tough because we were the very first to close and uh, now we are among the very last to kind of open uh, so last six months have been tough uh, uh, however i think uh, these also came in with a bit of a challenge where we we needed to possibly relook at uh, relook at our own uh, ways of working uh, we, we kind of went back and redefined uh, how we wanted to sort of uh, start back and uh, so from that point of view very uh, we, we, we use this extremely productively we worked a lot with our people uh, bonded extremely well trained them uh, for this new start and uh, from that uh, perspective I would say all uh, raring to go now uh, this has been a fantastic news for us and we believe that uh, uh, going soon, we should be able to redefine this uh, as we open now. Uh, Gautam, what is the reopening plan? If you can give me a little bit more uh, specific information in terms of, uh, will you be reopening what? You have close to 845 screens. Uh, you would think that you might be able to reopen all of them over the course of uh, the month of October. Uh, will it be a phased reopening, staggered reopening? How will it work? So uh, we believe that it will be a three-step process. The first lot comes into uh, uh, the opening phase on the 15th or the 16th of October. Uh, those, those would be roughly about uh, a little uh, lesser than about 400 odd screens across 79 properties, I guess, would open up in phase one. This would be across uh, 11 odd states. But this is as per the approval that goes. Now we are still uh, trying to, now we, we've got fundamentally approvals to open uh, in, in about 11 states. However, the, the last mile need, is being uh, sort of worked upon, whether it's about our people, training, uh, and even uh, certain partner relationships that we have across the board with developers. So those are being uh, ironed out and uh, we guess uh, out of these uh, 400 odd screens, we should be able to open roughly about 60-70% on 15th of October. The second lot, uh, we believe, will be end of October, closer, closer to about 31st. Uh, and then uh, there would be another bunch uh, that would possibly open up in November. But we are very, very, very hopeful and confident that by November, mid-November, we should have all our screens up and running. So between the middle of October and the middle of November, you'll be running at somewhere between uh, 25 and 50% capacity, right? Because so far the central government's permitted you to open up to 50% capacity. Uh, so uh, there are two things. First of all, the capacity of uh, uh, how it works is we've got approval from the central government to open. Then now it goes to the state. There are about 12 odd states out of the 21 uh, 22 where we operate uh, uh, we've got approvals uh, and, and now we are working with as i said our partners uh, uh, developer partners and the content partners to see how this would pan out uh, so uh, so that's how it will work uh, and uh, once that is all ironed out then we move to phase 2 and phase 3 so uh, the important thing is the central government has now given an approval uh, now the ball uh, starts ticking in with our state government uh, uh, partners and our developer partners to ensure that all the loose ends are tied up and we begin to open up. 
Okay, two quick questions to follow up on the immediate short term, Gautam. That is A, first, how dynamic is the situation as you're anticipating it to be? I mean, do you expect that you might open a cinema hall one day, but the next day, if that suddenly gets contained, you know, included in a containment zone, you might have to shut down all over again. Uh, and therefore, you'll have to be really very nimble on your feet. Is that something that you're preparing for? And part two of that question is, while you might open, do you have enough content to run? Uh, so let me answer your second question first. Uh, there is a, a, a whole lot of planning being done around content. So th these are technically put into two buckets. One, can we possibly get some content which did not run the full life or were uh, uh, brilliant movies and we feel that they could be re-released re uh, at the cinema? We are also planning to package uh, quite a few film festivals that would possibly open right at the beginning the second uh, thing is that there are a few hollywood films which have opened around the world like tenant and mulan uh, we, we are hoping that we will be able to get those films and those are brand new films uh, india hasn't seen those films at all uh, and and uh, that would possibly help us to tide over the first couple of weeks we believe that the first three to four weeks are going to be a bit tough uh, post which we will begin to get uh, a lot of content which is lined up okay and the first part of my question which is the you know sort of the dynamism that will uh, be needed or the nimbleness that will be needed uh, to be able to manage this because we're seeing this happen over the last two months right some areas open up then they're locked down again then they open up again uh, so yes absolutely but the way uh, we had to be practical we we worked out a complete planning for every city there is an extra two teams which are kind of uh, kept on hold uh, and they are the buffer teams in case there is any issue with any of our employees or any issue uh, then the, the entire team gets pulled off and the new team comes into play that's number one however if the city uh, has a certain uh, uh, issue regarding the number of cases that's something that we will have to wait and watch and see how uh, uh, the situation really uh, requires us to sort of react but as far as we are concerned in our own operation we, we are wanting to keep it extremely tight whether it's about employee safety protocol or a consumer we will leave no stone unturned to to ensure that uh, we follow all protocols and even then if there are any situations that that require us to be extremely nimble uh, and and um, uh, you know change teams or, or or react to a situation that comes in, uh, those um, uh, situations have been thought of, and and we are absolutely ready with those processes. Okay, let's talk about some medium-term business pressures, Gautam, as you uh, you know attempt to reopen after six months of a shutdown. Uh, this is unprecedented in all our lives. Uh, and I, as you pointed out, you were amongst the first to shut down and the last to reopen. Um, do you have a yield per seat, so to speak, that you work with? Uh, and you know, are you looking at maybe a, a different perspective on ticket pricing over the course of the next six, eight months? I'll talk about the viability of that because you'll anyways be running at restricted capacity. Uh, but I'm just trying to, you know, think of ways of bringing the audience back. Of course, all your protocols on health, etc., will be one reassurance factor. But effectively, it's also an audience whose incomes have been diminished over the last six months. So, are you rethinking the entire per seat yield strategy? Yes, totally. But uh, you know, uh, the more. Uh, the, the the situation demanded that we needed to go back and pull into our our uh, financials and look at all of this we uh, have said that we will divide this into three phases the phase one uh, we have actually insulated our minds and our people of saying that let's not get into any pressure uh, financial pressure in phase one our, our core business is about getting people into the cinema so we are going to be uh, sort of introducing a, a very very uh, exciting pricing module where we would want people to come in and and watch more films we would even have a kind of a weekly pass which could be done uh, within about three or four weeks of our opening where we encourage people to come and uh, watch more films uh, we will have we have a lot of large partnership with banks with kotak 
uh, with uh, with uh, a lot of other corporate uh, corporates that we work with. We are, we will be inviting all of their members, our own privileged uh, card members, our loyalty members is roughly about 11 million people. Uh, all those would get a lot of offers. We we will encourage them to come to the cinema because we are hoping that in the first phase we have to create uh, our consumers as as evangelists who would not only come and uh, watch this uh, cinema but would also go out and sort of talk about uh, what they have seen and experienced. We felt it was very very important that uh, for, uh, people should be confident of the space. Uh, this was also one phase where we said we will not look at uh, commercials so deeply. Yes, uh, and we are very confident that sooner than later, uh, this business is going to bounce back like how, uh, because great content is around the corner. There's 83, there's Surya Vanshi, then uh, next year there will be James Bond. Uh, there is a the whole lot of films. Uh, Durga Puja is around the corner, so uh, there is about four or five big titles from the Bengali uh, uh, film industry. So all of that, Punjabi films are all there. So we believe that content uh, and the innate power, uh, uh, need uh, for consumers to get back to cinema uh, will kind of prevail. So uh, we believe that the first so I, 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 I am so sorry to interrupt you. My yeah. apologies for interrupting you. I understand that you know, the business of content will prevail and I'm not suggesting cinemas are about to shut down over the course of the next one year. But I do want to try and understand what the medium term pressure will be on being able to draw audiences back. So, for instance, these offers that you're rolling out, um, whilst it may be unfair to compare this with anything pre-COVID, can you give me a sense just so that we can understand from an investor point of view what the difference in pricing might be broadly? Uh, it could be as low as uh, we could go down to about 30, 40 percent lower than our prevailing ATPs uh, and, and this would largely be for about uh, two to three to four weeks window till the time we begin to get uh, new content and again this is uh, not one size fit all if we get tenant, sure. tenant would play on uh, normal pricing but if we do have to play the old content or festival content if we do the Irfan Khan uh, festival or a Rishi Kapoor festival or, or get any of the older films and those will be uh, uh, discounted and played on that but however any new films that we get will will surely play at about the same ATP we do not intend raising the the ticket pricing uh, uh, in the short term at all uh, and, and that would stay. Oh, I wasn't talking about raising it all. I was. I, I anticipated you'd be considering deep discounts to bring people back to the cinema. Uh, not for the uh, new film or to... new content at all. It would be for, I got the, for that. the older film. Yes, of course, we will discount them and, okay. and try getting people to flavor and sort of uh, uh, sample what is on offer in terms of safeties and, and uh, protocols at the PBR cinemas. And, and they go out and then talk to many more about how good they sure. felt about I understand the, the evangelist model. Yeah. 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 Uh, Gautam, do you anticipate that you might have to go with, uh, let's say, discounted pricing or much lower pricing? Let me call it affordable pricing uh, for at least the, uh, the better part of the second half of this year? Uh, see, actually, it, it, it completely will sort of uh, move along with how the, the, con the flow for the new content comes in. Uh, you need to understand once we get the new content, it would all sort of emerge because what is happening today, even in the retail industry or the restaurant, if you see, if people are coming back, the discounts are kind of disappearing. Now, people are going back to the pre-COVID levels. Uh, there was a time when whether it was retail or whether it was the restaurant or the food business, which doled out discounts because they wanted people to get out of the shell and try uh, the, the service back but once that has happened you can uh, you can already see the trends whether it's the hotels whether it's the room nights whether it's the food or whether it's the retail slowly but steadily the discounts are weaning away and, and uh, the pre-covid levels are being maintained something similar is some uh, what we are planning to do as well uh, uh, if, as and when uh, we start getting the new content the because all this will happen when we begin to get release dates of some of the big blockbuster films while they're all in the pipeline 
We still don't have firm dates from those guys. And once the film industry sees how uh, consumers are coming back, so uh, the the first phase, however, uh, you know, short it is, it it, it seems it will be very very relevant. And and if we somehow manage to get consumers back, uh, uh, we we are then on the track uh, of of uh, really uh, uh, you know exactly the, how the business pans out pre COVID times. Okay, uh, a quick again medium short to medium term question: uh, Do you expect the revenue mix to dramatically change over the course of the next six months? Uh, that's the second half of this financial year between you know ticket pricing or theatricals and F and B etc. Uh, yeah, it, it would alter a little. Uh, to be honest, uh, 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 our box office share we believe should grow uh, eventually. Uh, we should be able to garner a lot more footfalls with uh, uh, this ticket pricing and all of that. Uh, F and B should be stable at about anything between twenty-five to thirty odd percent. Uh, the advertising uh, pie will take a little hit and will take a little time to recover. So uh, uh, we are prepared for that, and and that's how uh, uh, controlling cost will be a, a very very important uh, uh, you know part of our planning. Whether uh, looking at fixed cost, uh, variable cost, uh, we we're working very very hard and deeply into looking at each line item to ensure that even with uh, slightly lesser footfalls or a dip in the ATP, we are managing to. Maintain our EBITDA levels and and uh, take this whole journey forward. Okay, fair enough. Now, in the first quarter of this financial year, you did do a a marvelous job of cost control in the face of zero revenue. Uh, yeah. You know, your actual expenses were down to thirty two crores versus one hundred and fifty crores in the same quarter. In the last fiscal, total fixed expenses down to ninety seven crores versus four hundred and fifty one crores. You had said at that point in time that you were hopeful of being able to sustain that. Through the second quarter, uh, have you been able to manage that run rate? I think at that point your estimation was uh, that you do a fixed cost run rate of between 22 to 25 crore per month. Uh, you know. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yes. We are on board, and in fact, uh, we are only getting better from there on. Okay. The numbers are. How have you uh, been able, able to achieve to... that, Gautam? If I may ask, for instance, are you still not paying any rent at all? Uh, because I know your rent. No, cost we, we are not lower. paying any rent at all. No, we are not paying any no rent, rent at all. Camp. Cam is something that we will need to settle, uh, but rent uh, definitely we are not paying. We've really gone very tight on all our personal expense. Uh, of course, R and M, electricity, all of that has been completely pulled back, uh, and and uh, we, we are controlling a very tight ship at this point in time. Uh, I, we also know that you had to unfortunately do manpower rationalization through the course of the first three, four months. Uh, yeah. You were at, I think, 6,376 people as of 31st August. Have you had to do any other further rationalization in order to achieve the cost levels you need? Uh, uh, not really, uh, but we've rationalized the salaries, but not headcount because this is the bare minimum that we need to possibly open, even uh, with... Uh, 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 lesser occupancy. So we've done all our calculation. We believe that we'll need this manpower and PVR, PVR has always been a very people centric organization. So while uh, we've, we've tightened the screws, we've cut the uh, salaries, but we've ensured that every kitchen works and every household uh, does get that minimum amount to be able to sustain through this very tough period. Okay, so that's Q2 costs. Now, Q3 is when you reopen, right? Even in bits and pieces and in a phased way or a staggered way. How are you going to be able to keep costs low? Because in Q2 and Q1, you were able to uh, not pay rents at all. Uh, given that you were completely shut down, you were able to control other uh, costs such as electricity and water. Uh, you were able to control the common area management costs or CAMs, as you call it. Uh, how are you going to be able to be as effective in cost control in Q3 and Q4 as you slowly open up? And given that you're probably going to work at 50% or lower capacity, um, when do you think you might get viability? So as I said, uh, uh, the first 8 to 12 weeks are going to be very tough. And and if you uh, just recall when, when we spoke about opening up, I said that we are in deep discussions with our developer partners. Uh, so hmm. that is one piece that we believe uh, uh, we should be able to uh, get some substantial saving. At, at this point in time, I can't sort of divulge how many have we closed and 
what is the kind of saving, but that is work in progress. But we believe that uh, our, uh, our uh, plea with the, our partners is, is something which is extremely genuine. We've got very long standing relationship uh, with our developer partners and we are working with them to ensure that while our, our business takes time to sort of stand up and start running, we get enough and more support from our partners to be able to survive this uh, onslaught. And, and uh, rightly said, it is an important phase for us where we will need to uh, run an extremely tight ship, even in terms of personnel cost, while the minimum wage uh, will go back to its normal self as soon as cinemas open. But all the managerial cadre will continue to sort of uh, take the price cut, uh, salary cut for a little longer time so that uh, the, the business and the company comes back on track. Okay, are there any numbers you can offer us, Kotham, that actually would put in perspective some of the things you're saying? For instance, uh, what do you anticipate rent costs will come to in the third and fourth quarter? How low I will you be able to I not want to comment on anything specific right now, but as I said, with every state uh, uh, which is opening up, we have uh, our teams working alongside uh, developer partners. And uh, uh, the good thing is more than about 50% cases we've managed to close, uh, which means that we are on track and they, they, uh, we've kind of agreed on, on how we want to proceed for next three to six months period, uh, in some cases even longer. Uh, uh, but And I uh, assume, will, sorry again to interrupt you, but I assume these will be probably a shift to revenue share kind of situations? It could be anything actually. It could be a shift to revenue share, it could be uh, reducing rentals, reducing CAM. It, 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 so it's not like a one size fit all kind of a strategy for each person. And that's one of the reasons there is no standard comment uh, that I can give you on this piece. Every developer has its own and we have to understand we are we, we are also uh, we understand that developers are also under a lot of stress. So it's not as sure. if we are under stress, they are also under stress. So the, the whole idea is to sit together understand how we could help each other and, and manage this, uh, uh, you know, crossing this bridge uh, over the next three to six okay. months. Yeah, Gautam, I know it's really difficult to estimate what a reopening of this nature might be, given that it's a once in a lifetime, hopefully, situation. Um, but, you know, any beta levels that you're working with for uh, this third and fourth quarter at Very this point in time? The, uh, the <laughs> mandate that we have post the four week is saying, we need to sort of maintain an 18% uh, percent of data levels. That's something that we've given ourselves as a target. Sorry, could you repeat that? Could you repeat that for me? Could you repeat 18%. 18% of data, sorry, yeah. yes, thanks. So I'm just saying while our advertising will take time to ramp up, uh, but we have to control cost. Uh, 18 uh, and 18.5% is what we've given ourselves as an EBITDA target for the company to work on. And, and uh, we, we're sort of making sure that from uh, whether through cost saving, through increased footfalls to uh, uh, food sales, we manage this uh, uh, number. And you can achieve this at, let's say, 20% revenue. 15% uh, revenue because that's really what the first few weeks is going to be be like. See, as I said, the first four weeks we have really honestly uh, discounted. We're just saying the first four weeks. So you're looking at like Q3 another... and Q4. Yeah, yeah. You're looking absolutely. at Q3 and Q4 on average, roughly. Right. Okay. Um, a quick question on: I know you raised some money through a rights issue uh, very, very recently. I would think discounting that you have roughly about thousand crores in debt. Are you in conversations uh, with your bank lenders uh, to be able to restructure that, given that RBI has opened that window now? Uh, honestly, I'm not entitled to speak on the subject. It is best uh, the CFO talks on this. Uh, but you're right. We did raise a 300 crore right issue. We've got enough currently in the bank to sustain us through. Uh, and and uh, that's largely what it is. Uh, there are a lot of discussions around this piece. Uh, but best if uh, Nitin uh, our CFO replies on this. We've been all told to. But this. you would know. Uh, but surely Nitin would have told you if he intends to approach banks for a restructuring. Oh, no, he, there are, as I said, there are a lot of discussions which which are in progress and a lot of work which is happening. Uh, but as I said, uh, we are not in dire states. Uh, we've got money in the bank. 
uh, and this is uh, enough for us to tide us over for the next uh, six months. So uh, uh, there is no criticality on this subject. But how, having said that, of course, uh, there is a, a lot of work which is happening behind the scenes to make sure that in terms of capital, uh, we do not have any issues at all. Okay, fine. The last couple of questions, and this is a slightly more medium to longer term look, because I know, like you pointed out, Q3 and Q4 will just mostly be about being able to stand up and get ready to run. Uh, you know, the pandemic, as everybody says, has sort of uh, this accelerated trends that were otherwise already reshaping the media world. It was reshaping the news business for sure. Uh, and now the same has happened with you. I'm sure you get asked this question all the time. Uh, the business of movies versus uh, digital entertainment and OTT. And I'll put some numbers to you that I recently saw in a KPMG report. Uh, you know, it said that report showed that in FY16, digital and OTT business was roughly about 65 billion rupees and films right. was 137, right. right? So more than two times uh, digital and OTT. In FY20, which is the financial year that got over in March this year, digital overtook films. So digital was about 218 billion rupees and films was roughly 183. This year, it's expected to be 254 in digital or OTT entertainment. Films, of course, would be 61 billion because half the year you were shut. But more interestingly, in FY22, you will return to the US and the cinema business will return uh, to an overall business size of about 182 billion, uh, whereas digital will have grown substantially more than that to about 338. These numbers only just suggest that the overtaking uh, of traditional forms of entertainment by digital and OTT businesses has only just accelerated through the pandemic. What does that mean for businesses like yours? How do you reshape and re-prepare re uh, you know, for this audience? The, the most fundamental uh, question here is what business are we in? And, and we, we've tried to answer ourselves. We've gone out and checked with consumers and we realized that honestly, while we do show movies, uh, and we are in the business of movies, but actually the industry that we are catering to, and this is not something that I'm talking about, this is what consumers relay back to us. We are in the business of out of home entertainment. And really that pie is really big. And, and uh, uh, the question is, who would have ever thought that, you know, F&B sales for a cinema company would be about thousand odd crores? Who had ever thought that a media business, I've, I've come from advertising background myself, uh, when even today I talk about people that, you know, PVR would have touched about 400 crores of advertising on screen. People just do not uh, sort of believe in this. Uh, 100 million people coming in and this is growing. And honestly, while there is a certain, uh, you know, formula which is applied to all of this. And believe me, we've heard something similar when IPL came, said that now, uh, you know, four months or three months, there will be no movies at the cinemas. So the cinemas will die. Then there was piracy. Then there was DVDs. Then there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when uh, when uh, uh, these channels came in. Every time, uh, whether it's cricket or whether it's uh, uh, any form of entertainment, uh, cinema seems to be the low-hanging fruit where people turn around and say, hey, cinema will now perish or will slow down. It hasn't been. Uh, you can look at some of the data uh, in the West. While uh, the OTT players have, have garnered and have great numbers, the reality is cinema industry has also survived and flourished, not only survived but flourished. Uh, so the reality is uh, the appetite for people in India to watch movies and uh, uh, entertainment option, which has an ATP of roughly about $3, uh, with, where in the world would you get that? The most premium cinema chain today in the country has an ATP of just 210 rupees. So honestly, this is really the form of entertainment. Who wants to be sitting at home and watching a film? A lot of uh, talk has been around, uh, you know, uh, how Netflix and Amazon and a lot of other players have done so well in this period. And sure enough, even we have gone home and watched all these films on the OTT, but reality is uh, we have not been on the racetrack. Let us get on the racetrack, let the movies come, and then let's measure up because uh, currently we've been out of the race. And of course, when there is no option, uh, then people will have to move towards some form of entertainment. But we've also been talking to a lot of consumers 
uh, we've had, uh, you know, every month we are running huge uh, uh, research amongst 20, 30,000 people. And, and they are saying that, yes, yes, we are consuming media. But the fact of the matter is we are grudgingly watching movies sitting at home. And, and that's what uh, uh, tells us that people will get back to cinema because not just about no, movies. It's actually, about I, I, have, I have no doubts about cinema or entertainment content. I'm just wondering, and again, I'm not suggesting that the out-of-home cinema viewing industry will shut down or die. I just wonder if growth will flatten completely over the course of the next three years because some of these revenue projections suggest that whilst the cinema business will come back to its uh, FY20 size in FY22, which is, you know, two long lost years of growth altogether, uh, the digital business will by then have, you know, actually more than doubled uh, the digital or OTT or at-home viewing business. So I'm not worried about content being king forever. I'm just wondering the different platforms that they get consumed in. This is a never-ending dialogue, but let me talk about some immediate pressures. For instance, the second largest uh, cinema chain in the world uh, has shut down or is in the process of shutting down. This is Cine World. Its closure will hurt about 45,000 jobs across the US and in UK. Uh, you know, I know that Tenet um, earned about $300 million worldwide, and I know you're looking forward to that but it cost 200 million and it made only 45 million in its domestic um, you know, market, which is the US. Uh, and as a result of that failure, if I can call it that, many large films like the Bond film, et cetera, have pushed their release dates now to next year. Um, Disney released Mulan both on OTT and in international films. So strategies are changing to try and find ways. I'm not suggesting you'll shut down or any business like yours will shut down. How are you rethinking strategy was my last question. So, so really it's about redefining. Every business has to redefine. If, if we, uh, who knew that there would be gold class and director's cut and new form of cinema, the food, uh, you know, today when you go, you have a Sarah Todd menu being given to you as a food option. Uh, very soon we are, we are going to be launching a lot of F&B option online. So we've done our own microwave popcorn, uh, which will be sold online. So new forms, we also have to redefine. Yes, if, if we do not change track and we keep with our own uh, thought process, of course, any why only cinema or why only one company? Any company, look at big giants uh, across many sectors. Uh, they fail simply because companies and mindsets have failed to redefine their own business models. So it's the important today is that how do we sort of redefine our business model, both looking at what the consumer requires and how our cost structures behave. If, if both can be sort of worked around, I feel, uh, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of merit uh, in, in uh, uh, this business. And uh, for many, many years to come, this will have a, a roaring success going forward. Also to answer your question about Tenant, please understand 300 million is not a small number for a film to do. It's something, see, if a film gets produced in about 200 million dollars, that is different. But the fact of the matter is people came out and did that kind of business. And I think that is most critical. Uh, 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 the success and failure of a producer who spent 200 million and got 300 million is one way to look at this entire uh, success and failure of a film. But look at it from another perspective. 300 million uh, 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 worth tickets got sold for a film. Now, if the this movie would have got produced in about, say, 50, 70, 80, 90 million, all of a sudden you would have said this is a great success. So a film is a success or a failure basis what is the production cost and what is the the overall revenues that it generates but 300 million in, in, if seen in the other side of the silo seems like a fantastic business that a film could do uh, uh, right coming out of the pandemic and 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 that uh, uh, sort of augurs very well for the industry 
Yeah, well, I understand that they should have done 400 million to break even. Unfortunately, they didn't. But I get the point that you're making. Um, you know, all the best with standing up and getting ready to run. Uh, and then I'm sure we'll have opportunity to rediscuss some of the medium to longer term trends uh, at a later date. There's a great line I read in a Barron magazine article on the shutting down of Cine World. Uh, Gautam, I'll leave you with that. And I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I, you know, since you pointed out FNB, uh, you know, the line comes to mind. Uh, where they've made the same point about Cine World's shutdown, albeit on different grounds or different reasons. They said you can't run 778 sites on popcorn and kernels don't pay back debt. Uh, but we'll leave it there and we'll come back to this conversation over the course of the next six months. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.